Today on our 2011 Ford Taurus, we're going to be taking a look at and installing the Draw Tight Max Frame Trailer Hitch Receiver, which is a Class 3 hitch, part number 75670. Here's what the hitch looks like once it's installed on the vehicle. As you can see, it's tucked up nicely behind the fascia to where all you can really see is the receiver tube and the safety chain loops. This hitch bolts on nicely as there's minimal drilling required and once you do that, it simply bolts into place. It's got a nice steel reinforcement collar around the receiver tube opening, which is two inch by two inch. It's got the nice bent rounded steel safety chain loops there at the bottom of the receiver tube. It features both a five eighths of an inch and half inch hole. The five eighths inch hole is for your hitch pin and locking clips, but the half inch hole is there for if you have a J-pin stabilization system for whatever accessory you're using. This hitch features a 400 pound max tongue weight rating and a 4,000 pound max trailer weight rating. And those numbers are the same also when using a weight distribution system. But you will want to refer to your vehicle's owner's manual to see what your vehicle is capable of towing. The receiver tube is close enough to the rearmost part of the bumper that for any hitch mounted accessories you may have, it should give you plenty of clearance so you don't have to worry about anything making contact with the rear of the vehicle. Now, I'll give you some measurements to help assist with your selection of hitch mounted accessories such as bike racks, cargo carriers, and ball mounts. The distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost part of the rear bumper, about five and one quarter inches, and the distance from the top of the receiver tube opening to the ground is 11 and one quarter inches. First thing we're gonna to do to start our installation is we'll need to come up here to the inside of the fascia and there's two tabs that are up under here. We'll need to take a trim panel tool. If you don't have one, we'd like to pick one up. It's part number ALL648544 on our site or you can use a flathead screwdriver. Just need to work that out of there. We'll do that on both sides here. And then with those out, we'll be ready to drop the exhaust. I've gone ahead and put this safety strap across here just to help hold this up so that once I get both of the exhaust hangers off, when this drops, it won't drop very far so that it can't damage any of the flanges on the exhaust further up. Now first we'll start with this exhaust hanger that's back here, right near the tailpipe. I'm gonna put a little bit of spray lubricant up there just to help with the removal. And you can take a pry bar or a pair of channel lock pliers. Just kind of get leverage on the back of it. You can pry it right off the end there. And we can move up to this other one that's just below the rear axle. On this one I'll use channel locks. Put one side of the jaws behind the rubber isolator and the other side on the stud coming off the exhaust. You should be able to get it started coming off there. You should be able to work it off the rest of the way by hand. Now with the exhaust hanging, before we can put our hitch up into place, one thing we'll need to do, is I'm just gonna tuck these little tabs back out of the way. So then these elongated holes that are right up here on this bracket, I'm gonna need to drill those out so that I can fit a half inch bolt through there. So I'm going to take my half inch drill bit, start to drill that out. We'll do that on both sides. Now we can fish wire our carriage bolts and spacers into place. They'll be coming through these holes back here. So in order to get them there, we'll fish wire them through this access hole towards the rear of the frame rail right there. Send the coiled end for the threads up in there. And I can put my finger in there to kind of feel for it, to help guide it. There it is right there. And once it comes out, we can grab our carriage bolt and spacer. Put our carriage bolt through our spacer. We can thread it in here. Then I'll take that spacer, move it up the fish wire a little bit to send it through first. And then I can send 
the head of the bolt through. And then I'll just gently pull on it until I get it pulled through into place. On some models, it comes equipped with dual exhaust. This one does not have dual exhaust, but here's the mounting locations for the exhaust hanger back here. And I'm gonna actually give you a quick little tip on the other side, looking at where the exhaust is. On the exhaust hanger that's mounted up over here, it's got a little set tab that goes up into the frame rail, which when you fish this bolt through, it can make it a little bit difficult and the head of that bolt or the spacer can actually get caught on where that tab's sticking up into it. So in order to ease with that, you can take your 10 millimeter socket and you can drop this exhaust hanger bracket down and take it out so you can pull it into place and then you can replace that bracket. You wanna grab a second set of hands to feed this up into place. And this is gonna tuck up behind the fascia of the bumper here. Once you've got it tucked up, you can get it lined up there so then the bolt can come through. And you wanna be sure to not push that back up into the frame. Then you can get one of your conical tooth washers with the teeth facing upwards towards the bolt. and get that nut started. All right, so now with the help of an assistant, we're gonna need to hold this up into place. Need to install the handle nut right up in there to line it up with the hole that you previously drilled out. And then take your half inch bolt with conical tooth washer with the teeth facing up towards that handle nut and then get that hand tight so it'll hold it in place. Then you can release pressure. Then we'll do the same thing on the other side. We we'll want to make sure it's lined up since these holes are a little bit slotted. And right there looks nice and centered. So we can take a three quarter inch socket, just get those tightened up. Not real tight yet, but just enough to make sure it holds in place nicely. And we can do that on all of our fasteners. Now once we've got them tightened up, we'll be able to go around and torque them to the specification in the instruction manual. Once we've got everything torqued, we can take these push pin fasteners that we removed at the beginning, and we can push them back in just to make sure that the bottom of the fascia here is properly supported. So now we can come back and replace our exhaust hangers. We'll remove our safety strap. And that's gonna complete our look at the draw tight max frame trailer hitch receiver, which is a class three hitch, part number 75670 on our 2011. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.